All right, guys, so give me steel, stainless steel or mild steel any day of the week, not aluminum. Uh, I did the best I could on this and um, I got a little bit better as I was going, but man, it looks really, really bad. But I think what I'm gonna do is probably like just clean it up a little bit with a wire wheel, maybe a little bit of a sanding disc and just take down some of the blobs that are on there because I was having a really hard time uh, with the thin material here, you know, I was going to use, um, I actually tried this yesterday, the uh, cast elbow that I bought for the turbo, um, this here, but it was horrible. I could not get it to weld. The, the casting on this it was just so bad and dirty that it was just like turning to sand and just like falling apart. So instead, I went ahead and just cut up one of my U, um, my U bends that I had coming off the, the intercooler here, and kind of cut that, and then cut the, the turbo back a little bit further so that I could make that turn uh, and miss the frame rail because that's kind of why um, I'm having to do that is because the frame rail, uh, it's right, it's gonna sit like right here. So it'll end up being, uh, let's see if I have a piece here. It's gonna end up being like right here, okay? And it kind of comes close to the uh, frame rail there. So I'm hoping to get it on this side so I can just come straight down here and then over to the uh, intercooler. And um, yeah, but anyway, I got it welded. Uh, we'll clean it up a little bit with the, uh, um with a disc and maybe i may i may even paint this black the whole the whole thing i don't know but okay so now that we have that uh we have the the hd clamps that i got okay these are uh, i'm not sure what epman sport pick these up off amazon uh i don't know who makes them or where they come from but uh they're just like o-ring clamps uh that hold a lot more pressure than just a silicone coupler so this will go on top of here, like so. Have to work on that a little bit to kind of get it to fit good, but it does slip right over that pretty good. Okay, so that will go there, and out of there, we'll go down to the uh, intercooler, which I have uh, some transitions, uh, two and a half to three transition, and some more of these clamps here. Some th I, got, I got a three inch clamp here that this will go on the intercooler. So it'll kind of transition from two and a half to three back to two and a half, but it's okay And then we have to put another one on the throttle body So yeah, I don't like aluminum welding. I'm I'm okay at it and That'll work. You know, I also did. Let's see if I have that I'll show you guys. I did this a while back. This was actually not that bad This is the uh, intake air temperature sensor that I welded in the aluminum. That seemed to be a little bit easier because the two materials were, were more similar. They're, they were more uh, the same thickness. So the problem I was having is, is that the housing, the turbo housing itself, is super thick, okay? And it takes a long time to heat up. So you have to start over here, heat it up over here, get your puddle going, and then go over here really fast and then come back. Otherwise, you'll blow through it because this is not that thick a material. But I got it on there and actually I looked at pictures online and I've seen worse, so I don't care. But anyway, uh, so that's that. We got that done uh, and we got more to do, but I just kind of wanted to show you guys a little bit of aluminum TIG welding and show you how bad I am at it. Throw some comments down below if you guys got any tips. <laughs> but anyway, uh, let's do a little quick update on the car and then this is gonna be a quick video. Uh, like I said, you know, just a little time lapse and then we'll just go over this. Uh, Got all of the wiring done. So all the wiring is completely finished. Been using this um, self-adhering silicone tape. Works really nice on some of the connectors and just kind of tidying up the harness. Um, got everything over here for the alternator. Um, this is the coolant temp and the crank trigger. Um, this is just a ground and this will be, uh, what is that? That's the fan, I believe. Oh no, the fan's over here. Not sure what that is, but anyway. Uh, so I did get all the wiring done on the inside as well. Okay, so we got our panel all finished. It's got uh, four relays um, here, 
two more in the back of the car and this is a 12 position um, uh, fuse panel okay and what's nice about this fuse panel is, is if a fuse blows uh, it has LEDs here that light up if the fuse blows. So I, I tested it and if you pull the fuse out, it lights up. So kind of cool little reference there. If you know you you blow a fuse and you can quickly see which one it is and pull it out and replace it real quick. Um, I don't foresee that happening. I've never blown a fuse in this car. Um, and it's pretty much wired the same way, maybe a little different. Um, but uh, so yeah, I got uh, a ground bus here, a power bus up there. Uh, all this will be cleaned up. I'm just kind of waiting because I have a few more wires to run. Uh, like I want to get an external map sensor, so I got to wire that up um, and a few other things. But oh, and also the trans brake cable. So I went ahead and put the uh, button that was, I don't know if you guys remember, but my button was here for the trans brake. I went ahead and moved it to the uh, steering wheel right here. Pretty much the same. It's the same button. I just used one of the holes uh, on the steering wheel and uh, drilled the hole in the bracket. And it's just uh, sitting back here. And I'll uh, put the coil cord on here, wrap it around up in this area, kind of zip tie it back in there somewhere, kind of out of the way. And um, that'll be it. And then if we decide to do like a bump box later on down the road, which you pretty much have to have if you know with a turbo. So. Um, I don't know if I showed the last video or not on the last video if I had the carpet in it or not. I don't remember. But yeah, that's all done. And and I decided to not put anything under the carpet. Okay, so no wiring under the carpet. I was originally going to do that. But I was thinking to myself, you know, this is if anything goes wrong, I don't want to have to pull the carpet up to get to the wiring. So, I pretty much just tucked the wiring right up in here. So the the uh, harness from the back of the car is just tucked up under here and um, use that painless split loom to cover cover it up. So it's out of the way. It doesn't really, um, it's not really an eyesore or anything like that. So, and then uh, yeah, comes back here, up through this area. Uh, we have another ground that goes to the chassis down here. So two grounds, uh, one going to the front, one going to the back. Um, fuse, a fuse block here. This is a 150 amp main fuse. So you, when you do that, you kind of want to get that fuse as close to the battery as possible. So if anything in the car shorts, it short, it'll trip the fuse right next to the battery. So that's a lot less chance of you getting a fire in the car. Um, and then we go to our switch and then off the switch, uh, we have the other two relays for the fuel pumps. Okay. So all I got, all I'm running is two signal wires to the back to turn those relays on. So I kept my, um, the high current wires, you know, to the fuel pumps really short. So, um, that keeps the heat down and, um, it just, it's better. So yeah, that's pretty much a quick little rundown update. I, uh, threw these, uh, ET, ET, uh, fronts on here this weekend, put those tires on and, uh, kind of polished up the wheels a little bit. They look really good. And, um, yeah, so the only other thing I did was pull the rear end out of the white car and I got that sitting, just sitting back here. Oh, that's right. Also, I painted the uh, torque box, got that all painted. I got the uh, uppers uh, installed. Um, I got them in the lower, the lowest position. Um, apparently that's the stock position, but we're going to adjust it from there depending on how low we lower the car. And um, we'll see, we got to set our pinion angle. We got to set the... Uh, set the drive shaft up to um, zero it out with the motor, you know, by shimming the, the transmission and all that. Um, and then once we do that, we'll, we'll set our pinion angle and uh, get the, get the uh, rear end centered and all that. But, uh, you know, we're just kind of, um, when I took the rear end out, I had, uh, was checking the spherical bushings in the back and uh, they were really stiff. They, uh, you know, because I've driven this car or the white car, I've driven it in the rain a lot. Um, I've taken it to Bradenton multiple times and got caught in rainstorms. So when water gets in those, they, they do tend to get uh, kind of frozen and corroded and stuff. So um, I went ahead and ordered a new set of those. So I'm waiting on those to uh, put the rear end up in there. And um, I think what I'm going to do with uh, as far as the rear end goes is I'm just going to kind of wait on doing the nine inch ends and all that because uh, I, I call around and axles are going to take a little bit of time, so I don't want to wait that that long. I'll go ahead and order the stuff, but I don't want to wait that long to put the car on the ground. 
Um, I really want to get this on the ground and get the motor slid in so we can start working on the motor mounts, um, you know, the mid plate mounts and all that. So yeah, so we're just going to throw the rear end in there the way it is. Um, it should be fine for now. Uh, don't forget, I do have, it does have Mosier axles in it already. So um, they're the street series, but they're definitely stronger than what, you know, like a stock Fox body axle. So I don't really have a fear of breaking an axle or anything like that, you know? Um, so we could take our time on that and I'll order the parts. And then, you know, once we get everything, all the parts together and the, the, uh, the new brackets for the brakes, because everything's going to change. I can't even use these, um, these rotor hats. They're going to be, everything's going to be different. So I got to collect a lot of parts and it's, you know how it is right now with the, the, the virus and all that. Nobody's working and uh, it's really hard to get parts and nothing is in stock. So all I have to do is get those spiracles and I can throw the rear end in and we can go uh, testing, have some fun with it. Um, you know, I went pretty fast on it already, never broke anything. So anyway, yeah, um, that's pretty much it guys. Just a little update, a little bit of welding, and um, that's pretty much gonna do it for this video. Don't know if y'all learned, learned something or not, I don't know. <laughs> don't take any uh, advice from me on welding aluminum, that's for sure, if, that, if you take anything away from this video. So, but anyway guys, that's gonna do it. Hope you enjoy the uh, build, and uh, thanks for following along. See y'all later.